Hello, it's Andrea from Chasing Whimsy. I haven't done a tutorial in a while, so I thought I was going to show you a little bit of smudge painting on skin. This is actually, I would consider this an addendum or an addition to my Dodge and Burn series. I'm doing a lot more smudge painting now and I really like it and it's something that I want to have available to you to see how I do it. And what I've done, I'm working on this image right now. Um, I've done a Dodge and Burn on this and some I'm not finished with this, but I want to go in and show you how I would now smudge after doing that dodge and burn because this image in particular has some grain, uh, just some noise to it as you can see from just the the lighting and whatever else, what, what not, so camera settings. And so I'm going to show you how you can get rid of that and just really further that painted glowy skin that um, I just love and is a signature in my work and a lot of other work out there. So I'm going to show you how I do that. Now I have the Scott Deardorff smudge brushes, which are openly available now. Scott Deardorff is an amazing digital painter, but he really paints. Like he goes crazy with the smudge painting to really get that look. And I don't go that far with my smudge painting, but I really like it on skin and often on clothing. So I just want to show you how I do that because it really adds to that magical look. Of course, it creates a fantasy skin. This is not real looking skin. This is fantasy skin. So it's super smooth and not realistic in that sense. So someone says, your things look painted like plastic. Yep, they're supposed to. It's fantasy skin. I don't think they look like plastic. I think they look like a painting. So this is how I do it. So with his brushes, they are the best smudge brushes I've ever seen. So you can um, Google the Deardorff brushes, or if you're a member of my group, they are available in the group, uh, the CWPA Fantasy Editing Guild. You can join that if you want to learn more about fantasy editing, and you will find those brushes, uh, a link to those brushes in there. So let's show what this looks like. So when you're doing smudge painting, I like to make I do it on its own layer. I'll do a stamped layer so that I have control of um, opacities or masking if I need to like that. So to do a stamped layer on a PC, you hold down control, alt, shift, and the letter E, and it will make a flattened stamp version of everything that's below that level. So you've got a fresh layer to work on, which you can then mask or whatever, change opacities if you want to do different things to it. So. Um, you go to your smudge brush tool, which is here under the blur sharpen smudge. So I'm going to the smudge tool. And when you've loaded the Deardorff brushes, you'll see them up here. The ones that I use the most are his, or the only ones I really use are his smoothing smudge brush, which I use on skin, sometimes on clothing. And he has a texture smudge brush, uh, which I'll just show you. This is the texture one. So it's got little dots. I use that on hair because it grabs um, nice fronds of hair, like strands. And the smoothing smudge brush kind of looks like an amoeba. Paramecium? Amoeba. Probably more like an amoeba. So it's just basically a soft brush, but it's got jagged edges, and so you get this beautiful brush strokey kind of a look um, when you're doing your smudging. So that is the one that I will be using on the skin, this smoothing smudge brush. It comes in at a 65 size. I'm going to go down a little bit smaller, and I'm going to start with it at a 25% strength, and we'll see how that looks. Now when you are smudging, the two key things to remember is that the direction that you are smudging will either go with what you have or go against what you have. And if you want, like the lines of his face here, as you can see, go like this. So if I run the brush this way, I'm going to obliterate, obliterate those lines. If I go this way, I'm actually going to erase his lines and I don't want that. I want to, in this case, I would want to be following his lines, right? So I want to go this way so that I don't lose the shape of the lines when I'm doing that. So I'm going to actually start with some really small details first, and then we'll build our way out because I want to work those details. This will also help if you've got a little bit of a soft image. This can really help because when, for one thing, when you do your dodge and burn, you can do that. It'll, you'll add more detail in, but then you do this and you can further, um, adjust those things and it'll actually become clearer as you're doing it, which is really cool. So what we're going to do first is just start probably right down here at the nose. I'm going to like zoom away in here. Do you see the, it's, it's got, yeah, you know, whoops, that's too far. You can see all that grain and grit and whatever else that's in there noise. So I'm going to go and start in his nostrils here. And when I paint, I go, I hold down, I'm using a pen. So when you're pressing and going back and forth, 
you're smudging back and forth. Let me just show you what this does. If I go like this, see, I'm, I'm grabbing the color and I'm smudging back and forth. I'm holding it down and I'm smudging. So it's grabbing from here, pulling this way. It's coming back this way. So it's kind of smearing all of that together. And you want to be following the basic shape. I would be going down like this because that's his cheek. When I come up here, I'll go in this direction around these. You know, you want to follow the way that it's going so you keep the lights and the darks where they are and you're not doing some weird something to his face that's not going to look right. So we can come back to this, that's fine. I'm going to start actually with his nose and down here in the nostril and I'm just going to start smudging this in here, paying attention to where the edges are so that I'm not blurring over anything. If I want, again, if I go this way, I'm going to screw up this line. So I need to follow around the shape of that line and move my way out from that so that it smudges going outwards. When I go under here and down these, I want to follow them this way because if I go this way, I'm going to erase those. It's going to make them go away. This tool is great for actually fixing stuff. If you have something you need to remove, it's actually, you can just smudge over it and remove it with the smudge brush. I, uh, I've had some things that I've realized I've forgotten to do or like, forgotten to take something out or I need to fix something and I'll use a smudge brush and be able to delete it that way, which is really quite cool. I want to keep this shadow running this way. So I'm going to run it like this. Keep this running this way and that way I get that nice. This one I'm going to go like this just because I want to keep that little part of his little divot there. With this, I don't I want to keep, this is like two stripes here. So I don't, if I run this way, I'm going to, I'm going to get rid of this line and distinction between there. So with these, I'm going to want to run this way so that I can keep those. I'm sorry. I just told you that and then I did it the wrong way. I've gotten rid of those lines you see by doing that. So if I want to keep these lines, there's lines here, right? Of his lips. So you need to decide if you want to, you can go a little bit like this and keep those lines like this, but then if I want to keep this line and this line, I have to run it this way, you see? So kind of, you'll probably have to go both ways. Depends totally on what look you want to have there, so decide which, if you want to be obliterating, smoothing out those lips. If I want to smooth those out, I can go this way and see how they're, they're gone. So that just depends what, what you want to do for your look on those. With him, He's a boy, so I'm probably just gonna do them smooth. I then go like right along the edge here. If I like zoom right in here, you can, I just said like, I'm trying to tell my kids not to say like. And I'm just getting rid of that noise. That's working really too close. You don't need to get in that close. So then I wanna go around this nostril. So I'm gonna just following that contour so that I don't lose the shape of his nose. And when I do this part, I want to keep this line here and I want to keep, this is a circle like this, right? You can see the sphere that's going on there. So I want to make sure that I'm going, I might want to actually do this, the little divot there. And then I can start moving up. I'm going in here. I can go a little bit bigger when I get to here. Now a forehead is sort of this shape, right? So I'm going to want to go kind of like this so I can keep those shadows and lights that I have in there. Down, down the nose. In here, I'm going to go this way to follow that, and then I'm going to start following down this way along the edge of his eye. On um, the eyes themselves, you just want to follow. I'm going to go with a smaller brush. I don't want to lose those lines that are there, which are part of the detailing of the eye and the dodging and burning that I've done on there. Same with over here. You can see there, so there's the line, the edge of his eye right there. And the shadow here, I don't want to lose that, so I have to make sure that I go downwards and downwards so that I don't, if I cross this way, I'll lose the edge of his eye there. And then across this way to get that. You can see we're starting to smooth out. I might want this a little smoother. There we go. Now this almost looks like there's a bit of damage on his eye there, so this might be a case where I want to run the opposite direction and see how I can just soften that a little bit. I went across this way instead and was able to soften that down a little bit. We'll go back and clean up edges and stuff later, but I'll zoom in right really close to do the other edges, but let's just finish following some of these directions. 
this shadow I want to keep along here, and then this cheek, I'm going in the direction of how that cheek is. Up into here. Do you see the painting coming out? So cool. I'll start coming out from here. So this cheek that I've got going on. I'm going to go down this way. Continue with that cheek. Start going in big sweeps this way. So we don't lose the shape of his chin. Keep going with that cheek. Now here I'm going to go this way. You see I'm just following the shape of what's there. So that I keep those shadows and highlights in the right place. You can see how it is really starting to look like a painting. If I want to get really picky, I mean, you're never going to blow it up this big unless someone really wants their kid that big, but that's probably not going to happen. But I can, but I can go in and just touch up anything that looks like it just needs a little bit more to make sure it's all nice and smooth. Check my edges here along the eye edges. Get in, make sure you're in along the edges of the eyebrows, just kind of flicking in there to make sure there's no little gritty bits left that you missed. Make sure I'm close enough to the edge. That should be plenty good enough. It's a little bit gritty right here. And then just a little bit here. So I'm just going to go sweeping in that same direction again. If you don't want it brush strokey, you can kind of see the brush stroking in there. Run your brush the other direction a little bit and you can soften out those brush strokies. So I might just go a little bit this way now. And I can smooth that out. See? Totally looks painted. Let's just zoom out and have a look at that. There we go. My highlights are a little bit blown out on this. I have to go back and actually adjust something there, but that's not the point of this. I'm showing it was something I did in a in an action that I ran over there, so I'm going to actually fix those, but the point is showing you how to do this painting. Uh, let's do his arm here. With an arm, an arm is a cylinder, so you want to be running your smudging this direction. If you go this way, you're going to lose the direction of the highlight and shadow. And this is this is where you get that. People, how do you make the skin glow? Like this. Adding your highlights, your dodge and your burn, and then doing this. This is what gives you that beautiful glowy fantasy skin. Just like that. Super careful around hands and different features here. I don't want to lose his knuckles, so I gotta make sure that I follow the knuckles. And again, following, I don't usually go over the knuckle too much this way, but I will run it this way because that's the way the lines go on your hands, right? So you don't want to lose that texture that you have there. So this way for that, but then across the knuckle this way. Show my backside here. On one arm. It's already had some smudging in here. Now this hand has got some grit that we're going to remove. So I'm going to follow along the shape of the thumb here. Shape of this, shape of this. And then again, keeping with the direction of those crosswise on the knuckles and then this way. You can go along and do the, the nails, following those directions as well. If you find that you lose some of your highlighting doing this, just go back and color over them again with, with highlighting with your with Dodge and Burn. Now see, that time I went the wrong way and I just obliterated my... Let me show you this way. And then follow it here. There's my hand. It's got feet down here somewhere. this big toenail. He's got a little owie on his toenail. If I smudge like this, I can actually erase it. Gone. Follow these because those are important veins in his foot. Following this shape. Because all of the lines are coming this way, so that's how I would do the foot. Another foot down here. All these toes, you're gonna run this way. 
we don't lose the cylinder shape of those toes. These nails need a bit of work. I was doing this quickly. You will do more work than I am doing. Like that, and then again following these upwards because that's the direction that's going. You're not obliterating any lines. Doesn't take much. This is a 25% strength of that. Um, there you can see on that skin, let me just turn this off, I can turn off this layer. It's a subtle, subtle difference. You don't really see it unless you're zoomed way in here. But when you look at that compared to when it's on, it's just smoothing everything out. Again, these highlights are a bit brassy. I have to go back and do some adjustments on that. But that's how I do it. And I'll do that now as a final thing after my dodge and burn to really give you that pain thing. I'll also do it on fabric. So if I want to do with cloak, um, I could use that texture brush, but if I want to go to give it some texture, but if I want to just do this, I'm just going to follow up and down along these lines, go small where you need to, and just you're just tracing. It's like paint by number. The cloak goes this way. I don't want to lose those highlight things. I want to go this way. And you're just smudging it out to smooth it. And here I can get rid of that a little bit, make that smoother. Up here, I probably want to run it. Probably what I would do is run this way to smooth out the texture first, because it's got a bit of a texture in the actual fabric. But I want to make sure I don't go too far that way or I'll smudge out those lines. So then I would go back this way to actually get the smear that I want. This way and not lose those different shapes that I have going on there. And get rid of that wrinkle just by going over it because I'm going across it. Mm -hmm. This wrinkle. Maybe I don't want these wrinkles here. If I just smudge this way across them, you can make them disappear like a magic eraser. Anyways, that is how I smudge paint. And I would go through and do the whole thing. And then, as you can see, compared to where I haven't done that, how it looks more painted. And that is one of the finishing touches that I do. And I just wanted to show you. Thanks.